The system comes with a window that shows all of our addressable assets. We can open it by going to Window, Asset Management, Addressable Assets. The system will offer to automatically convert your asset bundles into addressables. Let's ignore this for now, so that we can learn how to do the process manually first. With the window open, let's select Create Addressable Settings to begin storing all of our addressable settings. When selected, we can see that an addressable assets data folder has been created for the project. We can see in the addressables window that we have a default local group created to store our addressables. If we select a character, we can tick the addressable checkbox on top of the inspector to make it addressable. We can now see that it has appeared in the default group. We can also simplify the addressable asset address. This address is used to load the asset in code, decoupling the path of the asset from how we load it. Let's do this by changing the path of our cat asset to simply cat. This change also updates in the addressables window. In our addressables window, groups are actually asset bundles with settings on how they get loaded or packaged. We can create a new group and drag and drop assets between them to organize where they get bundled. Let's define a group for our assets by right clicking inside the addressable window and choosing create new group, local pack content. This will create a local group. We can now simply drag our assets into this group, which we've just created. Let's drag our raccoon character into this group. This will automatically make the asset addressable. Groups created in the addressables window can either be local or remote. Local groups are built and copied in the streaming assets folder so that they can be added to the on disk streaming assets folder with the game build. Remote groups have parameters to define where they get built. For example, a folder automatically synced with a server and the URL where they can be found. This means that the system knows where to download them. Their usage is then transparent from a local bundle. If an asset is requested, which is in a remote bundle, the system will download and cache the bundle. This means that it doesn't have to be re-downloaded next time, unless it's more recent and therefore needs to be updated. It can then be loaded in the same way that a local group can. In the addressables window, you can also label your assets. Labels allow you to link assets together, even across groups. You can load assets by label, and the system will load and return all assets with the given label, including downloading the bundles that they are in. In Trash Dash, let's add the label character to all our characters, so we can load all characters with a single line when the game starts. We can do this by clicking on the drop-down in the Labels column of the addressable window and typing character in the New text box. Let's press Return to save. This will now create a character label. The label will then be added to the drop-down list and we can select it for use with other assets now too. Code-wise, the addressable system also simplifies a lot of what we need to do. We can remove the asset bundle manager we originally were using as the addressable system takes care of building the bundles for us. Secondly, instead of enumerating bundles and triaging them, we can simply call addressable.loadasset in the character database. This will give us an async operation we can register to get a callback for each character loaded and add them to the database as they get loaded, no matter where they come from, locally or remote. As you can see, addressables give us much more control over our asset bundles making it easier to create them and also making them much more efficient to use. You can get started using the addressable system and the lightweight render pipeline now by downloading Unity 2018.2.